and welcome everyone. My name is Mary Beth Hodson and I am the senior partner and the director of boarding school consultation for Arch Education in Hong Kong. Um, welcome. Um, as you know, there are many excellent boarding schools in the US. Um, however, meeting with families um, for many, many, many years, families have trouble um, figuring out you know, what's special about one school, what's special about another school. So um, this spring, we've decided to take a little different approach. Um, as many of you know, that participated in our webinar series um, last fall and, and through this early spring, um, we had a lot of informational um, sessions with boarding schools. So, this spring, we decided to kind of bring it a little bit closer and hopefully have some conversations with heads of schools and faculty, um, hoping to bring a closer look to our families at these terrific schools. Um, so today we have Peter Mulder, head of school um, at Berkshire School, which is a co-ed um, boarding school of about 500 or so. Peter, you can correct me. Um, students in Sheffield, Massachusetts, which is in the beautiful Berkshire Mountain. So welcome, Peter. Thanks so much, Mary Beth. I'm happy to be here with you. You are welcome. We're delighted to have you. You know, in thinking about um, doing this with you today, I was remembering actually the last time that we saw each other was was at your beautiful reception in Hong Kong. And that was all it was, I think, November of 2019, right? Sounds right. We uh, we travel annually to Hong Kong uh, at least once, sometimes twice, and uh, have been really fortunate with great kids and great families coming to Berkshire for many years. Yes, it seems like a long time ago, and and oh gosh, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get back. Um, hoping that maybe sometime uh, in the near future that things will open up and we both could get back to Hong Kong. So, um, so you know, today I'd like to start off by um, by you know hopefully asking you to introduce school. Um, we have a few programs that we would like you to talk about in particular, and we can. Um, we have some questions um, prepared to, to hopefully get a more detail about that. But maybe if you'd start off with just a brief introduction to our families about Berkshire, and then we could um, dive a little deeper into some of your special programs. Sure, thank you. Well, we, uh, we are a, a co-educational boarding school, and our boarding population is about 95% boarding, which I think is important, uh, particularly for international families. We welcome just a small, uh, great, but small handful of day students coming from the local community. So about a 95% boarding population. Um, that's about the same number of our residential faculty living on campus as well. So we're really excited to have a, a very tight knit community here on campus. Uh, as you mentioned at the base of uh, the Berkshire Mountains, um, Mount Everett specifically, and our enrollment now is about 415, 420, uh, grades nine through 12, um, welcoming in obviously a new ninth grade class every year, um, adding a number of new sophomores um, to the existing class as it moves forward, and then uh, moving through junior and senior year. So about a graduating class of around 120, um, deeply committed to academic, artistic, and athletic co-curricular excellence across the board for all our Berkshire Bears, um, and feeling great fortune about the uh, faculty that our kids get to work with, especially the spaces and places in terms of the facilities for supports to those academic arts and athletic programs. Um, great school culture that we work really hard at um, establishing and, and building each year. I think there's a strong sense of community. And then there's a very nice balance of a big school program, particularly on the academic side, and happy to talk about some of our signature programs that support that. So a big school program, uh, certainly for the top students uh, looking our way, um, but in an intimate community where students are known well and there's a great partnership with families um, around each student's dreams and hopes and, and aspirations. So um, we balance ambition and humility, I think, in equal measure here. And we're really fortunate, particularly in recent years, to have welcomed in such great uh, admissions cycles of uh, entering students and families. So uh, happy if today's time together can be a part of the next generation of bears uh, wanting to join me and us here at Berkshire. Thank you. I, I hope so. Um, you know, I think when, you know, when families, you know, talk to us about, you know, different schools and, and you know, as we um, have visited, certainly I've visited you a bunch of times, right? Um, you know, one of the, the programs that really kind of speaks I think to your culture is the ProVita program. Um, I think it's totally unique. I'm, I'm not sure 
um, that I know of any other school that does exactly that same that same piece um, in such a student driven way. Um, can you talk a little bit about Provida? And I'd like to share at some point, you know, the, the excitement that the kids have when when um, participating in that. Um, so, you know, maybe share, you know, how Provida came about, its purpose, you know, maybe even some of the um, maybe more popular or more unique um, offerings that that program has. Yeah, it's it's a tremendous program. It is uh, unique to us in the way that we schedule it as a balance of on campus um, academic explorations, um, kind of lifetime passion explorations for kids here on campus. We have a robust travel program in addition to the on campus. We're in our, I think, 13 years of ProVita. Um, it's very mission centric. So our motto uh, here at Berkshire is learning not just for school, but for life. So ProVita represents that for life commitment. Um, and it's been a wonderful opportunity for us to tap into the academic, artistic, co-curricular passions of our faculty. Um, we teach it over the final week of the winter term. So it lands usually the last week in February or the first week in March. It's uh, abutted to the start of March vacation so that some of those travel experiences have the ability to grab a few days of the early part of March vacation to extend uh, beyond just the, the official week of ProVita. And it's a very mission appropriate uh, break from our more traditional curriculum um, that has become a reason that uh, students and families choose Berkshire. Mm -hmm. And some of the classes, as I think of our our favorites. I would say I really look uh, back to fond with great fondness to teaching a, uh, a woodworking course coming out of my time as a furniture maker many years ago. So we put together hand cut shaker uh, dovetailed candle boxes over the course of a week. And that's left uh, a good theme of uh, make, perform, solve and do kind of guides our coursework. So in recent years, that's been an intro to digital animation. It's been a philosophy and film class. We had an alum come back and teach a philanthropy and investment management um, class as a, as a private wealth management expert. Um, we have a, a nationally renowned Irish step dancer on our math faculty. So she teaches an annual course in Irish step dancing. Our daughter is a junior here at Berkshire and she built a kayak paddle uh, from scratch under the, the great tutelage of one of our, uh, our English faculty members. And I think the last piece that's really grown in recent years is that our students are teaching these courses. The number of students uh, through the interview process and, and highlighting a potential ProVita course as part of their application to Berkshire, many of those then become courses that students move forward um, to teach themselves or to co-teach with a faculty member. And then again, the travel experiences are just um, incredible. So about 20% of the school population by students will be off all over the country and globe for travel, language immersion, cultural immersion uh, programs. Uh, again, many of these led by students, service projects um, around the globe. Uh, favorite from past years is always dog sledding in Minnesota. When a group of students and a couple faculty members head out to Ely, Minnesota for seven days of dog sledding through uh, kind of the Arctic North and camping along the way. Um, so a great mix of academic passions taught by the faculty and students here on campus. Um, real robust travel opportunity for kids around literally the country and world. And it's a wonderful mission appropriate moment for us as a school to remember our, our motto, um, to really harness and, and focus on authentic learning, um, not just here for um, a college preparatory curriculum, but for life. And it's just a lot of excitement about um, that last week in February, first week in March, whenever it lands. So that's Berkshire's ProVita. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, I kind of in in thinking about talking with you today, um, went through a couple of the last you know years of, of curriculum and, and was thinking like, my goodness, how do you choose two? Right? It's just there's so much. Right? The Celtic dancing actually um, caught my eye, and man, spacecraft and you know, two of your seniors had a really cute play on words with um, an, an Asian cooking class, which really it's rice to meet you um, in you know America, um, and that was I thought really interesting, and I like I thought it was just really unique how you also tie them to like sense of place and sustainability and global studies that it, you know everything just seemed to match up so beautifully to your your mission and purpose. Um, you know, from a from a point of view of working with students, right? It's on your application, right? 
um, you actually give the, the incoming or prospective students an opportunity to design their own pro vita. And, you know, I know that uh, the kids that we work with find it super challenging in the sense of, of, wow, I actually could design my own course and what does that look like? And, and some of the ideas that, that, um, that they've had are just amazing. And, you know, each time they're like, Mrs. Hudson, do you think they're going to use my idea for a class? You know, I'm like, I don't know, but keep at it because it's such a great idea. Um, and, and I think that, you know, certainly our kids that have, um, you know, been your students have really valued that, that experience. So um, I think that's, you know, one of the things, at least for me and in, in describing Berkshire is really the first, the first um, talking point um, as far as unique programs. Um, and I think it resonates with a lot of our kids. Um, you know, I also think what resonates is your um, math and science research program. Um, it's, it's so advanced and, um, you know, a lot of our families and, and kids are, you know, find that, um, you know, really intriguing and, and one of, and, you know, another piece of fit, right? So maybe you could talk a little bit more about that program and, and some of the projects or um, questions that some of the kids have been asking around, um, you know, math and science research. Sure. That, uh, like Provita, um, is in many ways, what we're known for initially is as families look to the school and prospective students look to the school. It's got a couple extra years under its belt uh, compared to Provita. So I think we're closing in on our 15th year of advanced math science research. It's centered here now on campus in a tremendous uh, research lab that includes an electron microscope uh, led by Dr. April Birch, um, herself a, a PhD in microbiology. She used to be one of the mentors that we would travel to at the SUNY Nanoscale Center over in Albany. And our kids were working with April off campus. Um, we realized uh, that her husband's a Berkshire grad and she was living locally. So we said, why, why don't you cut your commute and move your lab to Berkshire? And she came in and in a, in a blank space, built out our advanced math science research lab, latest edition being this electron microscope. And it's at least a graduate level lab. It's passed many of the labs that our local colleges and universities um, would be fortunate to claim. And over 15 years, we've had 20 to 25 students each year, and that number is probably now pushing closer to 30, that work closely with April, with an outside mentor from the world of college or university math and science research uh, in a student uh, initiated, student directed program. And again, these are at least undergraduate level projects that students work on over the course of typically a junior and or a senior year. In some cases, they're graduate level um, quality research that leaves our students co-authoring papers with college and university professors in math and scientific journals, which even as I share that with you this morning is still staggering to me that that's the, the caliber of the work that many of our kids uh, are doing here. Um, I know it well, because at that time that we welcomed it to Berkshire, I was our academic dean. Um, I've also had a couple of advisees that have been in the program, including uh, one who's a senior this year, Many of the top level projects will be submitted to the Regeneron uh, National Science Talent Competition. We're fortunate to have had 11 semifinalists over that 15 years of the program. That's the, the highest honor in the United States that a student can earn for a national science talent competition. And our mentors in different colleges and universities will land at that SUNY Albany Nanoscale Center. Williams College is just to our north, the Albany Medical Center. And then because of Zoom and the ability to connect virtually, we've got our students in this program uh, working with mentors uh, virtually or with, with mentors coming to campus for a visit at different times during the year. Um, that one truly is unique for us as a school. Imitation is the finest form of flattery. It's been nice to see other schools in our, in our peer and cohort group uh, come to study our advanced math science research program, look to welcome something similar to, to theirs. I think uh, that ours is led by April in that PhD role as a microbiologist is, is quite, uh, quite unique. Um, and some of the projects, as you mentioned, Mary Beth, we're in the highest levels of genetics and genomic research. Um, they're all student initiated. Many times they've got a, a connection to a family experience, potentially around an illness that a student would like to learn more about and help be part of the solution to finding that cure. We've done a lot with uh, virus evolution. We had a really interesting one a few years ago where someone was looking at algae blooms as a potential pathway to disease cures for ALS and Parkinson's. We've had opportunities in both math around computer science, sports analytics, 
economics around um, economic research and modeling. So April welcomes these 25 to 30 each year. You sit down in September and have the conversation is what would you like to study and learn more about? We partner with that outside mentor in a college or university setting and off they go. And one of the uh, happiest and, and ex most exciting nights on campus is our exhibition at the end of each year when all of these projects and their scientific poster boards are gathered in our math and science building and shared with the school. And these students have every reason to be uh, quite proud standing up on their toes, uh, sharing their work with the whole community because it really is a tremendous work. Um, of course, in the college process, it's a real differentiator for these students to be able to present this work, uh, the research, the co-authored scientific paper, if they're so fortunate, the Regeneron Science Talent Honors. So um, for them heading off to the next level of college and university, it's been a great differentiator that's uh, helped them in the college process in huge ways as well. So happy if, if uh, your families are getting a sense of it as they visit campus, see the lab, meet with April, or um, pick all that's on our website in terms of information and highlights around advanced math science research. Yeah, and you've got some great videos of, of the kids doing their projects, and you know, certainly that college matriculation that you mentioned, uh, um, you know, is is on there. It's incredibly impressive. So um, that all that all seems to. Um, you know, be be very well received. So, um, for for the humanities kids, right? Um, you have really kind of the equivalent as well. Um, you know, different different research criteria, right? Um, but the you know the advanced humanities um, program, you know, also seems for those kids that you know are more aligned with humanities or or maybe social sciences have the opportunity to study um, at a very high level as well. Maybe talk a little yeah, bit we, about that. Yeah. Sure. We, we saw the success of advanced math science research. And a lot of it is it's all focused on student directed, authentic, relevant uh, learning. So beyond the textbook, beyond the classroom, what are the connections to the actual real work in different areas of math and science and now humanities research? So we, we built out the advanced humanities research modeled after the success uh, of the advanced math science. And that's a one or a two year program. The first semester of that year long experience is spent um, here on campus and connected to again, college and university mentors, learning the research skills in any areas of, of humanities uh, interest for students. The second semester is focused on a student initiated project done in close partnership with the mentor uh, from, from college or university. And then again, landing in a, in a public exhibition shared here on campus. It's done everything uh, for kids that the advanced math science research has. Again, the, the notion of co-authoring a, a humanities research paper with a college or university mentor is still, um, uh, at least for, for one or two each year, part of their excitements about the program. And it's given our, our students with, with loves of English and history and language and art the equal opportunity to um, extend their learning in those areas to the highest levels of a, of a high school experience. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, these are at least <clears throat> undergraduate opportunities at that level. Um, and in some rare cases, graduate level with, with published papers and, and, and that kind of support um, at, with a college and university mentor. And that's one of that I know particularly well since our daughter, that junior here this year, is a part of the Advanced Humanities Research uh, program working with Dr. Sandy Perot, again, a PhD that's leading that program now for Berkshire. So um, in both ways, for our math and science enthusiasts, for our humanities enthusiasts, mostly for our juniors and seniors at the upper levels of their curriculum as they move through Berkshire, those are both real distinctive signature academic programs um, offered um, only here at Berkshire and, and thrilled to be able to, to share those with, with kids each year. I agree. You know what's also super unique? Um, I think you guys are kind of ahead of the um, ahead of the curve. Is is your um, aviation program? Um, at least in our work with kids in the last, you know, say two years, it's aviation, space race. You know, the 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 uh, SpaceX, the Mars rover, the um, reintroduction of the um, program um, with the moon. Kids are really interested in this, and I think that it's hard to find. Um, so you know, obviously, we're talking. Your program seems to be a little more flight oriented 
um, in, in the curriculum, but one of your Provitas actually is, you know, speaks to that as well with, um, um, with space. But I think that um, in particular, if you have that interest, there's not many schools that have um, a program like yours. So I had some questions around that. It, are we talking about a set of classes that make up that program? You know, how does that work? It, it looks like there's some, a flight simulator, like major stuff. Yeah, well, it's, it's part of that first floor of our Bellistics and Math and Science building. You see the Advanced Math Science Research Lab. You walk past a, a fairly new engineering maker space. And then tucked in the back of that, that last room of uh, the makerspace is a Redbird flight simulator. Not my high school experience or probably yours, Mary Bass, but that is, no. that is a Berkshire Bears experience. And aviation science is a year-long elective within our science department. Students over the course of the year study to pass the, the ground certification um, criterion as the first step of earning their pilot's license. We're also fortunate to have a local airport about 10 minutes up the road. So on weekends and afternoons, um, as they move through the program, they're earning flight hours with an instructor out of the local airport. And we've had any number of students over the years earn their pilot's license while here as a student at Berkshire. And then just a couple of years ago, we welcomed the, the flight simulator in, um, which has accelerated um, the learning curve and the, um, the march to a pilot's license. I'll give you my favorite story around the program was a young man that had an acceptance to the University of Virginia um, and was with a pilot's license earned through aviation science. So he asked a faculty member if they could drive him up to the airport because he was going to fly down to Charlottesville, Virginia for his revisit day at UVA. He didn't have his driver's license, so he needed a Berkshire faculty member to get him to the airport, but he had his pilot's <laughs> license, flew down and back to, to uh, Charlottesville for a great um, revisit at UVA, um, had to call for the ride back to campus when he landed back in the Great Barrington Airport, um, and stories like that, and kids flying literally over the top of campus on weekday afternoons or weekends uh, in the aviation science program is tremendous. Um, it, it's built in the history of a program that was here many years ago called Wings Over Berkshire, and it acknowledges our proximity to a great local airport and, again, authentic, relevant learning well beyond the classroom. Uh, and each year welcomes probably 10 to 12 um, students through that aviation um, path to their pilot's license at Berkshire. Amazing. Fantastic story. Any, any um, prerequisites? Any student could take that? Anyone can take it. It's typically a junior or a senior, oftentimes adding it as a second science class against their core class, sometimes in biology, chemistry, or physics, or engineering, but it's open to all. We're only limited by kind of uh, how many we can roll through uh, the ground school certification exam, the flight training up at the local airport. And then these are, again, really um, dedicated students as they're doubling up in science in most cases to take the aviation science class. Fantastic. Makes you want to do it all again. Um, lucky, lucky, lucky kids. Um, you know, thank you for, for sharing about your, your special programs. Um, you know, anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like for you to um, maybe give us a little bit of update about, you know, how things are going, uh, maybe looking to the future, um, what the families could expect this year, you know, with any, um, you know, COVID um, lessening or, you know, what, what at least um, today um, the plan is for the upcoming year. Yeah, we've been um, very fortunate. We've, we've, we've planned well, but we've had a great measure of good luck uh, in addition to that. And we've, we've had a strong in-person school year at Berkshire. So um, the, the majority of our time together as a campus and a community has been in-person. Um, we're in the final weeks of concluding a great school year and have done quite well relative to the challenges of the pandemic, um, been able to welcome our international uh, students and families in, um, which was a real focal point for our efforts in trying to make access to campus this year as easy as possible. I think the safety of our campus is always a, a key factor in families' decisions. We're in a very rural, isolated, um, beautiful setting. We have a single driveway that comes onto campus, so we're able to regulate all traffic to and from. So that's been a big help here as we've walked through the pandemic. And we're quite optimistic on the fall. So um, our faculty is moving towards becoming fully vaccinated really here in the, in the days and weeks that are coming. We're beginning to move that way for our over 16 uh, year old students. 
And we're looking at September um, with a banner year in admissions that will leave us a little bigger, a um, few more uh, young women on campus, as was our, our design through the process, and reasons to think that we'll certainly be an in-person and mostly back to normal educational experience for kids coming in the fall. So uh, give great credit to many of our adults, uh, the board and others for, for good planning. I'm, I'm always quick to credit um, our good fortune and luck along the way. And um, we're all really looking forward to closing off this school year in a good strong way, particularly for the senior class, but also looking with, with uh, genuine optimism towards the fall. Again, from the admissions standpoint, as we just walked through that cycle, we were 30% up in applications, really focused on some super talented young women in the admissions pool. So we'll be moving a little um, closer to gender parity amongst our student body next year as a result and strategically designed around that. Our acceptance rate probably in the, in the volume of applications has drifted down closer to uh, one in five, uh, 20%. And it's left us just feeling like our admissions office, led by Dana and Salmi and the team, are able to make really hard but thoughtful decisions on who are the students that are the best fit for us, how do we line up with their interests and passions, and who are the kids and families that really are the best, strongest, most talented, interesting group uh, in a mission-appropriate way to, to move us forward next year. So we're extremely excited about the coming fall. And with optimism, again, coming out of the pandemic with some good lessons learned that we'll be in a good, strong spot to start the school year next September. That's great. Hopefully some, some um, budding uh, female scientists in that group. There, there will be. April, uh, particularly by her role model, mentoring and leadership, uh, we're probably running uh, heavier on the female side of advanced mass science research than the males. Um, same for aviation science. So in terms of upsetting whatever stereotypes there were about young women in math and science, those don't exist uh, at Berkshire, and we're, we're pretty happy about that. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, any, you know, any final, final tips or any kind of words of advice for any particular prospective student that might be, um, you know, watching this at a later time. Yeah, um, if and when you can get to campus, which I hope is uh, either this spring for some uh, tours of campus uh, um, through our vehicle tours, but especially in the fall with an in-person visit. You've got to come and see us. You've got to see the campus. I can't describe, nor can our website present, the stunning natural beauty at the base of Mount Everett that our campus represents as part of a Berkshire experience. Do check out the website. There is a lot of great information, both on the admissions process, but these and other signature programs that, that might be differentiators for, for Berkshire against other great schools. And then I think lastly, I'd say talk to our Berkshire students and their families that are here now or recent alumni, the, the, the way that they describe their experience, both students and their parents. That's our best endorsement as a school. So if you have a chance in Hong Kong, especially to meet with some of our students and families or other parts of the world, please check in. And if you need help making those connections, uh, our admissions team would, would certainly love to connect prospective students with current or past students. Because that word on the street from, from the, the authenticity of their experience at Berkshire, um, that's the best endorsement for any school. Agreed. Agreed. And you have some great kids. Well, thank you so much for sharing and hopefully we'll get to see each other soon. I hope so too, Mary Beth. I look forward to traveling to Hong Kong. Again, it's a, a once or twice annual trip that I really look forward to, to welcoming families in as part of the admissions process. Um, so we're looking forward to all of that as we get ready to start the coming school year in September. Thank you, Peter. Say hi to all my friends there. I will. Thanks so much okay. for uh, uh, spending time. You're welcome. Bye-bye.